ask you how you ended up here. Once you buy property in Fredney, it's very hard to move on. Why did you come here? I was misled. I, don't know, I still don't know why you came in the first place. Where did you come from? Buckhurst Hill. Where's that? West Essex. And I've been trying to get, move back for the last 20 years. Where did you come here in the, in the first place? That's the third time you've asked me that question. And I've already answered it once. Hello? Hello? Come on, I think we've had enough of you. Thank you very much. Come here. We're all friendly around here. Nice day for a stroll. Like I was saying, that you're getting everybody that comes from both sides of this, because I'm, I'm getting everybody that comes this way, you've got to get everybody that comes this way. Does so it matter? Yes. Why? Because this is how they wanted it done on the survey. So if you add 15 to your list of children, all right, one dog and a bicycle, everything that comes through these two gates here, you put on your list. Everything that comes through these two gates this way goes on my list, all right? <laughs> I really can't see a lot of difference. Who is that man? That's David Foster. He's uh, head of the Action Group, uh, which is uh, got a lot of people involved to try and avoid the gates uh, being changed to barriers. Now I've forgotten what the hell he said. Which way am I taking them? Going this way? Can you remember? If there wasn't a gatekeeper to be with the gates, then you wouldn't be able to influence, control and order. And if you haven't got order and control, then you have chaos. about it. Well, look at it. It's comfortable, you know. That, that one's empty now, but it's never been empty for quite a long, long time. And you see, look at the frowns, and look at the... That's the doctor's surgery, and, you know, it's got all sorts of things to, to make it more interesting. happen here in Frinton? Well, somebody did try to get over the fence between me and my next door neighbour. <laughs> if that's anything to go by. So he shuts his gate early now because of him, his side gate. And that sort of thing. And no, we haven't got anything like peers or anything like that. What's wrong with peers? Well, it was just one of the stipulation when Frinton was built back in the, in the late 19th century that we didn't have them. Why not? I don't know why they didn't have them, but that's one of the stipulations that the person who developed all the land said we weren't to have. Why wouldn't they have peers? I don't know. I don't know, because I was... I don't know. They've got one at Clacton, and that's enough, and one at Walton. You don't like peers? I'm not that keen on peers.
Why do you choose to live in Frinton? I didn't choose to live in Frinton. What happened? We had a house, a holiday house, and we used to rent it. But we fell in love with the house, so we bought it. <laughs> and uh, never intending to spend all this, the rest of my life here. A lot of people in Frinton never, ever wanted to live here. It's still here. Don't know why. What do you tend to do here? I tend to do? My, uh, what do you mean do? <laughs> live here. <laughs> There's nothing else to do but just live here. It's like a bit of lucky. How do you pass the time? Um, Same old thing, I suppose. Sort of routine. What were you doing this afternoon? Ah, uh, you never know. Are you happy? Very. Frinton lives. So what has this place done to you psychologically? Old Lord knows. I mean, I do suffer from Frintonitis, which is another form of claustrophobia, which purely means I have to get out of the place because it drives you up the wall. Why does it drive you up the wall? Well, the simple reason is that our social life is mostly in the mornings between 10 and 12 outdoors because if you don't go out you don't see anybody and uh, I like to go out I must admit. Afternoons you do see some occasionally some people. Evenings it's absolute dead loss they all get back in their coffins. I took early retirement and came here to live. It was the only place where I knew anybody. <clears throat> I see. So do you still have many friends here? I made a lot. The two that are former colleagues of mine that I originally came up, the reason why, I did the dirts on me and died within 18 months of my arrival and within five months of each other, which leaving me stranded in Frinton of all places. Why are you still here? I don't know. I've looked at other places, but the thing is, I suppose I've put down roots of a song and I don't really want the upheaval of moving again. Once was quite enough. the gates might be taken away. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Why? Well, I've grown, I've, well, I've grown, I've grown, they're part of, part of the heritage of, of, the, uh, of the town. I'm celebrating my 90th birthday. <laughs> It's a lovely place to live. You don't get bored here. No. <laughs> and it'll be even better if they leave our gates alone. <laughs> 
instead of some lunatic at Colchester controlling them. Tone seething with discontent is Frinton. <laughs> Good morning, all. Can you hear me? Can everybody hear me? Good, good. Well, good morning. Welcome. Thank you, all of you, for coming. Uh, I hope it's going to be worthwhile for you. Uh, first of all, Network Rail will give a presentation as to what they propose to do. Thank you, Brian. Firstly, thank you very much for allowing us an opportunity to come and speak to you about our proposals for the Colchester Clatton Infrastructure Renewals, which is mainly a project to replace signalling equipment, and then I'll go on to talk about the proposals for Frinton Level Crossing. It's proposed that these crossings will be controlled manually by our signallers, but there'll be signallers located in our main signal box in Colchester Station, so there won't be a person nearby who will be in the signal box. They'll be using closed circuit television technology to see the crossing and ensure it's safe. Perhaps clearly you see the red warning lights there, just a single barrier on both sides of the crossing. And this is our first stage of that halfway lock. The survey in February told us that the level of crossing usage, even in February, was far too high to be for us to install any other form of level crossing in this location than controlled barriers, because the usage is very, very high at that point, even in February. <laughs> I mean, I do hope you don't mind me coming back on yeah, that, no but if you're going to do a proper survey, then please do it. Don't try and fool us here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We don't have, a, don't have a survey in August. We don't need it, need it because it was bad enough in February. <laughs> okay? We <laughs> just missed Santa Claus. I hope I'm trying to be as honest as possible with you about these works, uh, uh, but obviously uh, not everyone agrees with that. So no decisions been made? We, we want to proceed with these proposals. Has a decision been made? That's the question. Has a decision been made to proceed anyway? We want to upgrade these level crossings, yes. Yeah, you want to do it, but you haven't paid it. You haven't paid it. We haven't made the final submission, no. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope you all appreciate what the representatives from Network Rail coming down and talking to us this morning. It must be quite difficult for them, given the sort of reception that they've been having. But uh, at least we all know now what they intend to do. Whether they succeed in doing it may be another thing. I you care about the removal of the gates? Oh, of course not. I think it's a load of bloody nonsense. The sooner they have the, the automatic barriers in the better. And some traffic lights. Charles, you seem to be a little separate from most people in the town. I don't know when the neighbours get wind of certain aspects of my existence, there's been to be a lot of talk, but so what? What do you mean? Oh, well, and, uh, well, mostly, perhaps I shouldn't say it, but with the television camera here and the rest of it, I mean, after all, what's he been up to? 
What do you mean, Charles? <coughs> Who is he? Or what, what, is, what, what, is he what is he really? Well, I mean, they'll just have to guess, won't they? I'm not telling you. Do you have things for you? Yes. We, we've got a lot in common. I'd have to go because somebody just come in my shop. OK. So I'd have to go and seek for the shop. He's the only man you've ever really loved? Yes. How many years has this been going on for? Oh, long, long time. I can't really remember now. I think we met back in the 80s. You've never been in love before that? Not really, no. Never been my sort of scene. <laughs> Till I met Geoffrey. Then I wanted to. <laughs> but that's as far as it's got. <laughs> stuck a bit this morning. I don't quite know what to do. You see, if my sister comes through that gates, I don't think well, she doesn't always remember which road I live in. You know what I mean? It's one of those things. There's the surgeries keeping people busy. Have you seen them all going in up there? 